So, welcome to the uh, third lecture on the testing part on fault equivalence. So, in the last lecture what we had uh, discussed was that uh, for testing a circuit be it functional or structural the idea is that we have given a circuit and then we, if there are any input kind of thing. So, we have to apply some test patterns and we have to find out whether this output response matches with the golden response. Then our idea was that we have seen that if we go for a full functional testing then the odd number of inputs was 2 to the power n which was quite high and is almost impossible to apply to the high uh, expensive uh, test equipments if you have to apply around 2 to the power n patterns. Then we said that we can go for some kind of a structural testing. So, in structural testing what our idea was that the whole uh, big bigger circuit of say which had n inputs you break it up into small small modules which is having say uh, some 3 inputs, this having 2 inputs and these have 5 inputs or some some number of inputs and then you test this functionally, you test this one functionally, you test this box individually functionally and that was about the functional test at the structural level. That is you are testing this guy or the smaller module functionally, but uh, you are not uh, checking whether this interface is proper or not. So, this is kind of a structural testing at the module level where the module is a small blocks of circuit like this. Now, the, now the, the question also we had asked in the end of the last lecture that if these modules are quite large in number then what is the idea? If these modules are quite large in number then less number of interconnects has to be checked like for example, uh, if you consider the case where uh, this is your whole block which have some n, n, n inputs then you break it up into say 2 modules which is n by 2 and n by 2. So, then less number of uh, interconnects has to be test means has to be verified or idea is that you have to test this one individually you have to test this one functionally individually and then the structural part is this block itself. Then what happens this less number of interconnects in there and also in the last lecture we have seen uh, what do you call this uh, in structural testing uh, this intermodule for this intermodule mo intermediate modules you have to either control or you have to observe. So, if you have to control then you have to put some 2 is to 1 multiplexer or you have to put a shift register kind of a thing. Similarly, if you have to observe this intermediate lines then you have to bring these pin outs or you should have another shift register to observe them. So, if the number of intermediate lines are less so uh, the number of extra circuitry is less. But if the intermediate lines are small that means the modules intermediate modules which are you are testing at structural level the modules are large in size and the and the ratio in which n decreases may not be large I mean that enough right. For example, you can have n by 2 and n by 2. So, 2 to the power n by 2 is not a small number, but on the other hand if you make this elements or what you call this uh, the elements you want to uh, test structurally are quite small. So, you have some 2 inputs here you have 3 inputs and so on uh, some 5 inputs dot dot dot. So, the whole n inputs you are breaking up into small small modules and this one you are testing functionally, this one you are testing functionally and so forth. So, now lot of intermediate wires are more. So, you have to put more number of receive registers or more number of 2 is to 1 marks and pin outs to have controllability and observability of the intermediate lines. But now the uh, what do you call this? Uh, modules or what you call the structural elements or structural blocks are now having less number of pins. So, it is actually 2 to the power 3 plus 2 to the power 3 uh, 2 sorry plus 2 to the power 5 dot dot dot. So, the number of test patterns that need to be applied as quite less it is 2 to the power 3 plus 2 to the sorry 2 to the power 2 plus 2 to the power 3 plus 2 to the power 5 and so on. So, number of test patterns are smaller because n you have broken down into small small numbers, but now the large number of intermediate wires are coming into picture. So, that is what is the answer to the first question of the yesterday's uh, I mean uh, last lecture in which we have asked the question that if the in these modules are quite large in number uh, quite uh, large in size or large means the more number of pin outs then what is the problem. So, the problem is that you have the n does not reduce in that amount. So, you have to apply a large number of test patterns, but the interconnections we are less so less amount of what you call this uh, 2 is to 1 multiplexer or registers has to be applied. On the other hand if your modules or, or on the or the modules or on which you are going to test functionally or which are the blocks of your structural testing are, are having very less number of inputs then the number of test patterns to be applied is less, but on the other hand you have a large number of interconnects in between them again. So, the now it is more number of uh, 2 is to 1 multiplexer pin outs or shift registers are required. So, there is a trade off if you are doing this without a fault model, but now the next question was that if then what is fault model in case of fault model. So, if, if this is a circuit and you have smaller modules in between them then we do not 
test this one structurally. This is actually structural test with a function with fault model. The previous one we discussed was a structural test without a fault model. So, in fault model what we do? We just say that we do not want to test this functionality of this rather we want to find out that this circuit should not have any fault from a fault list. So, we have seen lot of fault model like uh, stuck at fault, bridging fault, delay faults etcetera, but among them the stuck at fault is the most accept, uh, widely accepted one because it is simple to handle as well as it, uh, it can give you an accuracy or uh, with you call confidence of 99.9% .9 plus that if you are doing structural testing at stuck at fault then the circuit is not having any defect which is as accurate as 99.9%. .9 so, in this case what happens even if you are in this case if you are having a structural test with a functional uh, structural test uh, structural testing with fault model then if you have a bigger circuit like this then you are breaking up into smaller modules then we can have interconnects etcetera then we are not bothered about functional testing of this block or functional testing of this block. We are rather bothered that this net should not have any stuck, stuck at fault this net should not have any stuck at fault similarly this net should not have stuck at fault and this net should not have stuck at fault and so on as per the stuck at fault model. And then we have also shown that for this it is such a good stuff that you need not have any pinouts extra, neither you need to have any 2 is to 1 multiplexer, neither you are need to have any uh, what you called uh, this uh, 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 shift registers extra if you are going to do a structural testing as using a fault model. So, that is why the second question was does really any stuck at fault happen? The answer is no, really do not stuck at fault really may not happen in a circuit, but what actually happens in stuck at fault is that from 2 to the power n that is all possible testing factors you can apply, we need to apply say some k test patterns which is feasible within a time. Now, the question is which k test patterns you have to apply among this 2 to the power n, 2 to the power n is a larger set, sup full superset, and then among them you have to apply only some k amount of test patterns. Now, which k? Actually, stuck at fault tells you which k to apply. It will say that apply a stuck at fault like for example, we have said that if you are given an AND gate something like this and then you say that stuck at fault here is to input AND gate. So, it says that a stuck at fault here means uh, the two input AND gate. So, a stuck at fault, stuck at 0 fault here. You want to test it. So, it says that you apply 1 1 and you verify the output to be 1. If the answer is 1, it is correct else the stuck at 0 fault is there. So, this 1 1 to test the stuck at 0 fault here you are applying a 1 1. So, that means, this stuck at fault is implying that you apply this pattern. So, each stuck at fault implies one test pattern. So, if you have a n, uh, n, n, n number of wires then we have seen that at most you can have 2 n number of stuck at faults that means, 2 n number of patterns where 2 n is equal to k number of patterns. So, stuck at fault is, is giving you a very good subset of 2 to the power n which if you apply then you are going to say that we are 99.9 percent sure that your circuit do not have a defect. So, stuck at fault as such do not appear, but they give you a guideline regarding which subset of test patterns to apply that can give you a very high count, I mean very high confidence. So, what we will see in today's lecture? In today's lecture we will see that if there are n lines in this for in, in a circuit then you can assume that we have 2 to the power n stuck at fault that is 1 stuck at 0 and 1 stuck at 1. But today we will see that in fact that is much much less than 2 to the power n because some faults are equivalent that is or that means, if you apply a test pattern more than one stuck at faults will be tested. That means, we will require real in reality number of test patterns required to test stuck at faults is much much less than even 2 to the power n. So, 2 n is extreme fully functional test then 2 n that is equivalent to test uh, equivalent to your uh, functional test sorry structural test with fault model is comes to 2 to the power 2 n 2 n means one, one line stuck 0 stuck 1 so 2, but then we will see today using fault equivalence that this 2 n further comes down to a much much lower number. So, that then what happens is that with a very low number of test patterns say p in number we can have confidence of 2 to the power n test factors with 99.9% .9 plus accuracy. So, uh, we will see again the beauty of stuck at fault model that not also 2 to the power 2 n it is much less than 2 n test patterns has to be applied. So, today we will see how it is possible. So, as I told you so if a circuit has 2 n bits I mean so 2 n nets. So, we know that so if a circuit has n nets. So, there can be 2 n stuck at faults because stuck at 0 and stuck at 1. So, it is linear ok. So, the question arises if you assume that there is uh, what you called uh, uh, one test pattern is required for each fault. So, number of test pattern required is 2 n which is much much less than 2 to the power n that is fine. So, we are quite happy with it, but now we will see that it is even much less than 2 power uh, even less than 2 n that is the number of stuck at faults will be much much less than 2 n or in other words the number of test pattern requires to test all these 2 n faults are much much less than 2 n. That means, what one pattern will test multiple stuck at faults, multiple stuck at faults will be tested by a single pattern that we will see which is can be possible by fault equivalence. 
So, let us go to the yesterday's or last day's example. So, this is a circuit. So, let there be a stack at fault here, stack at one fault. So, obviously, we have seen that the pattern to test the stack at one fault is a 0 over here. So, if you apply a 0 over here, the fault gets sensitized. So, the sensitized means if the uh, if uh, if the no fault is there, this net will be 0. If fault is there, the net is 1. And, and to visualize this F fault effect at this point, you have to keep all the lines as 1. So, in the output of this AND gate, you will get 1 if there is fault and 0 if there is no fault. Similarly, this propagation to the output has to be done. So, you have to apply 1s at all this. So, this test pattern I equal to 0 this one is a test pattern for stack at 1 at net this net. So, you can see how many nets are there in this case. So, 25 nets are there then uh, 26, 27, 29 and 30. So, it is 25 plus 5 plus 1. So, this is 26 nets are there. So, in this case how many stack at fault should be there? It, it can be 2 n that is 26 into 2, but we will see that it is much less than that. So, how do you do that? So, we see that there is stack at one fault here and the pattern to detect this is this one that is 0 at this net and 1 in others. Now, you take another case. So, now you take another stack at fault here. Initially, this our fault was here. So, for that our test pattern was this one and now again we are considering another stack at fault at this point which is again a stack at 1. Now, let us see what test pattern can be applied. There can be many patterns which can be applied, but let us see one. So, in this case this is a stack at 1. So, our answer should go uh, what you should apply is a 0 over here. Now, if, if the fault is there this is 0 and if it is normal sorry if the fault is there then this uh, in the normal case the answer should be 0 over here and 1 in case of fault. So, somehow you should apply a 0 over here. Similarly, this effect has to be out, uh, delivered at this output. So, all these things should be 1. Now, how to make a 0 over here? So, you can apply any one of these 5 lines are there. So, accepting all 1s, accepting all 1s, accepting all 1s, you can apply any other pattern. So, if you apply all 1s over here, then the answer will be 1 and your fault will remain undetected. So, you can apply all 0s you can apply 1 0 0 0 0 and so on, but let us apply the pattern which we applied earlier. So, let us apply the pattern 0 1 1 1 1. So, now in this case you see the answer is 0 over here it is normal and fault. So, the same pattern is actually testing stuck at fault here. Stuck at one fault was tested here as well as the same pattern is also testing a stuck at one fault here. So, in other words this pattern is actually testing two faults in a group. So, that means, if you apply this test pattern and in the output you are getting a 0, then you know that there is not a stack at one fault here and not a stack at one fault here. Else, this circuit may have a stack at one fault here and stack at one fault here, either of them. Now, it is very important point to us for us to make, repeatedly I am saying, we have to keep it in mind that we are not going for diagnostics, because we are testing millions of circuits in a run and if you find that this circuit is not working fine you throw the circuit and later on you can apply to find out slowly that is that is not much of a constraint because you are then you are, you may be wanting to know what went wrong why there is a fault over here and why there is a fault over here that is a diagnostic procedure which you can do slowly on a very few number of sample chips to find out where it went wrong. But for mass scale testing we do not really bother whether the fault was here or whether the fault was here we do not bother whether it was here or whether it was here we just find out it is a fault and we have thrown the chip. So, one test pattern that is 0 1 1 1 1 and all ones is testing a stack at one fault here and a stack at one fault here. So, we have seen that one pattern tests more than one stack at fault. So, we will see that uh, much less than 2 n number of test patterns are required to test all the stack at fault. So, stack at test pattern that is structural testing with stack at fault has given us so many benefits. The first benefit is that you need not have any extra pinouts or any extra multiplexers or any extra scan shift registers to for controllability and observability. Number of test patterns are, are required is much much less than 2 to the power 2 n that is uh, much much less than 2 to the power n and also much much less than 2 n because one test pattern is able to test multiple number of faults. So, that is the beauty of stack at fault model and at the same time the accuracy which has been found out statistically is about 99 to 99.9 percent .9 plus. That is it is saying that one test pattern so that is if you are doing a full structural stack at fault testing then you can be 99.9 .9 percent confident the circuit does not have any fault. So, that is the greatness of stack at fault model. So, now let us look at the formal definitions of fault equivalence. So, what is say is saying that if two stack at faults f 1 and f 2 are called equivalent, if the output function represented by the circuit f 1 is same as the represented by f 2. That means what if a, if you have a circuit say some circuit x, now if there is a stack at fault f 1, now what is the output function? The output function may be something in terms of the nets as well as the fault. Now, if there is another position fault which is f 2 and if the output function remains same, then these two faults are called equivalent. And obviously, if, under such a case, 
same test pattern will be applied. Let us take an example of a very simple AND game. So, let us see that if you have a say stack at 0 fault over here. So, if you have a stack at 0 fault over here, so what is the function? So, this uh, function at this point, the function at this point is 0. Now, if you have a stack at 0 fault over here, not here, then what is the function? The function is 0. Now, if you have a stack at 0 fault at this point, then what is the function? The function is 0. So, you can say that in an AND gate, stack at 0 here, stack at 0 here and stack at 0 here are equivalent. Now, what is the test pattern to test this for? It is 1. So, if for an AND gate, if you apply a pattern 1 1, then 3 stack at faults are getting tested by 1 group. So, that is what in this case there can for an AND gate there can be 3 lines, so 2 inputs and 1 this one. So, into 2 you, you have 6 faults, 3 stack at 0 and 3 stack at 1. Now, how many pat test patterns required to be tested? It is 6. Now, you can see surprisingly for stack at 0 fault, we require only one test pattern that is 1 1. Okay, because it is testing stack at 0 here, stack at 0 here, stack at 0 here. And uh, because this stack at 0 faults at all the inputs of a AND gate are equivalent. Because the output function f of the AND gate with a stack at fault here or a stack at fault here or a stack at fault here is same and that is called 0. So, therefore, we can represent an AND gate in the single stack at fault model as simple as we can keep, we can choose any point with a single stack at fault, all faults are not required. You can say that I can have a stack at 0 fault here. Then automatically if you represent the AND gate this, this way with a stack at 0 fault at one input, then you did not bother about stack at 0 fault here, stack at 0 fault in this place. Because automatically if you are testing this stack at fault, you apply 1 1 and automatically other two positions are tested. So, for a two input AND gate, the number of stack at fault that needs to be tested is 1. So, it is much much less than 2 n. So, we are always saving in this one. Now, you can also think about a 10 input AND gate say. So, 10 input AND gate. So, number of input output lines are 11. 10 plus 1 11. So, in number of test pad, number of stack at fault possible is 22, number of test pattern is 22. But now, if you see the stack at 0 fault, so if I say that I consider a stack at 0 fault here, then what is the pattern to be applied? All ones. Okay, so, a stack at 0 fault here at the first net, first input, all ones test the stack at 0 fault here, test the stack at 0 fault at the output and also a stack at 0 fault at all the, at all the 9 other inputs. So, for a for a n input AND gate, then for even a this is 2 inputs, so dot 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 you can make an even an n input AND gate. So, number of stack at 0 faults that needs to be considered is only 1. So, if there are more number of input lines in a gate or a circuit, the fault uh, equivalence plays a major role because more number of faults, equivalent faults can be merged and the number of test patterns or number of faults that need to be tested remains much much less than 2 n that is the number of this this thing. So, we have seen that this happens for an AND gate. Now, let us see for other gates. So, this is an AND gate. So, you have already seen that all these stack at 0 faults are equivalent. Now, let us see, see a OR gate. So, if you see a OR gate say this net is stack at 1. So, what is the pattern to be applied to test the OR gate? You have to apply a 0 0 over here. So, if it is 0 0 and if it is stack at 1, the answer is 1 if there is a fault, if there is stack at fault and the answer is 0 if there is no fault. You can very easily observe that the same pattern needs to be applied if this net has a stack at 0 fault and similarly if this net has a stack at 0 fault. So, for OR gate, the stack at 1, all the stack at 1 faults are equivalent and you can just keep any one of them whichever you desire. So, you can see that AND gate and OR gate are basically dwell off each other. So, in case of AND gate, so any one point you can have a stack at 0 fault, for, but for OR gate for any other point you can get a stack at 1 fault. So, just a dwell off each other. Now, if you go for the NAND gate, it is ve all very similar to AND gate. So, if you have a stack at 0 fault here, so you have to apply 1 1. So, if the, uh, but only the output get reversed. So, you can see this uh, default equivalent concept of AND and NAND gate are same. So, you can see that uh, if the stack at 0 fault in the NAND gate, so if you apply a 1 over 1, then the answer is 0 if there is no fault, but the answer is 1 if there is stack at 0 fault over here, the answer is 1 if there is a fault kind of a thing. So, I mean you can easily find out. So, those things will uh, we can uh, these things are very quite obvious. So, you are not going much into details. Now, also in the case of what you call this uh, inverter, a uh, stack at 0 fault here you need to apply a 1 and for a stack at 1 fault uh, sorry and this actually uh, you need to apply a 1 over here it is a stack at 0 fault for an inverter and also if there is a stack at 1 fault at the output of an inverter you have to apply a 1 over there. Because uh, you can just see if the stack at 0 fault over here you apply a 1. So, if answer is 1 then there is a fault and if there is a no fault if the answer is 0 any one of them you can consider. 
Now, if you consider a stack at 0 fault over here, then you apply a 1 over here. The answer is 1. If there is fault, then the answer is 0 if there is no fault. So, for an inverter, these two stuff are equivalent. Similarly, uh, a stack at 1 fault here is equivalent to a stack at 0 fault here for the case of an inverter. So, I mean, once you understand the concept of fault equivalence for an AND gate and an OR gate, other things are very much straightforward. But there is a very interesting fact when you come to what you call the fan outs. So, you can see this is a as I already told you that in case of fan outs, we have to consider stack at 0 fault here individually and the stack at 0 fault here individually and the stack at 0 fault here individually. Because statistically we have seen that if you take one stack at fault over here and you do not take another two stack at fault here, then the accuracy was coming down to less than 99.9 .9 percent plus or some numbers. So, to enhance it, people have found out that you have to consider stack at fault here. If you have a stack at fault here, then these two lines are obviously affected by the fault. But if a stack at 0 fault is here, then only this net is uh, fan out is infected or uh, is uh, what you call this uh, affected by this fault and if there is a stack at 0 fault or a stack at 1 fault here then only this line is infected. But surprisingly you see that these two faults are these faults are not equivalent I mean it should have been equivalent but it is not. So, you see why let us consider a stack at 0 fault here. So, if there is a stack at 0 fault here then what happens in this net uh, I 1 we call it say uh, it is 0 if the fault is there because the stack and if no fault is there the answer is 1. Obviously, if this is stack at 0 then you have to apply a 1 to test it. Similarly, for I double prime this net. So, what happens if it is a 0 then uh, if there is a fault because stack at 0 and if the um, if I 1 is a value of 1 then there is no stack at 0 fault here because you are applying a 1 over here. Now, you see if there is a stack at 0 fault here then what hap happened to, uh, to sensitize the stack at 0 fault we have to apply a 1. To apply a 1 over here you have to get a 1 over here that is very obvious. So, now what happens you see if I have a 1 over here then if there is uh, fault is there then you get the answer is 0 and if it is 1 then there is no fault that is obvious because I put a 1 over here I should get a 1 over here but because we stack at 0 fault this is 0. But this fault is over here. So, this output is not affected by this one. So, what happens it says that I double prime equal to 0 if fault and I double prime is equal to sorry it should be stack at 0 fault it is 1 sorry it is 1 sorry. So, uh, it should be I double prime is equal to 1 if there is fault and I double prime is 0 if there is no fault because this fault is not affecting this line in any way. So, now what happens is that so uh, the presence of this stack at fault so whatever is the functionality here and with the stack at 0 fault here whatever is the functionality at this point are not equivalent. Similarly, let us see so in this case also it should be 1 I am sorry. So, what it says that uh, if you apply a stack at 0 fault over here so you have to apply a 1 over here. So, now if uh, uh, if there is a fault so this will be 0 but if it is no fault so 1 will be propagated here so the answer is 1. But this net is not affected by this fault so I 1 and this one will always be 1 with fault or without fault. Now, you can see that the output function by this if the fault is here the output function sorry these are both ones the output function this is a mistake so these are both ones. So, the output function with the stack at 0 fault here and a, a stack and a sorry and a stack at 0 fault here and a stack at 0 fault one are not equivalent because this one and this one uh, this one is not matching with this one. Similarly, this one is not matching with this one. So, the output is different. So, even if the fan out is such a nice thing and looks similar, but these faults are not equivalent. So, you cannot have any merging between these faults. Like in an AND gate, we can easily merge this fault and we keep uh, only a stack at 0 fault. For an OR gate, you can easily keep a stack at 1 fault here. But for a uh, what do you call a fan out you cannot do any such kind of merging because this fault the output function this one is not equivalent to this one with this output fault and this fault the output function this one is not equivalent to any one of this. So, there cannot be any kind of merging that is what is been explained here. So, uh, fan out is very surprising as I already told you. So, no merging and all these things can be possible. Now, let us take a simple example and illustrate the concepts. So, see let we have a uh, uh, circuit having a fault equivalent. So, this one. So, this is a circuit. So, now uh, this is an AND gate. So, first we have to put all the 2 n faults. So, again I told you we have to remember that. So, stack at faults when you are considering for each line can be having a stack at 0 and a stack at 1 and we are considering one fault at a time. That means, uh, if there are multiple faults can also be possible is multiple that is a stack at 0 fault here and a stack at 0 fault stack at 1 fault here. So, 2 faults can also occur simultaneously, but then the number of all possible faults will be 3 n 3 to the power n. If you can see because each line can be normal it can be stack at 0 
and it can be stuck at 1. So in all, so it is difficulty will be we have uh, 3 possibilities each net and then the number of all possible test uh, falls will be 3n and the number of test patterns will be not 2 to the power n, but it will be 3 to the power n. And it is actually a much more uh, complex problem to be solved. And in fact, we have seen that this is called multiple stacked fault model that if you are considering more than one faults in a go. So, we have seen that if you are taking multiple stacked fault model, then the confidence is somewhat 99.99 plus something. And if you are going for a single stacked fault model, then the confidence is 99 point something plus and the marginal difference is very, very less that is amount of accuracy is very, very less and that does not merit investigation because the amount of cost to be paid for uh, testing a single circuit fault model the number of pattern is even less than 2 n okay. and in this case 3 to the power n faults are there. And then if collapsing will not be that much because you can easily appreciate that uh, this one and this one combination and this one and this one combination to be equivalent or not we have to do lot of uh, the algorithm will be quite complex. In this case the algorithm is very simple for an AND gate we know that these three faults are equivalent because the same functionality is there. But if I ask you that whether this com this two combination and these two combination are equivalent the algorithm will be very very complex. So the amount of am paid amount of I mean what you call the cost paid in terms of computation and the number of test patterns is the order of if there are three and faults and then the number of test patterns is somewhat a very high order then the amount of cost paid and the improvement of accuracy is not that high. So, therefore, people have found out statistically that single circuit fault model they are quite happy with. So, here also we are uh, fault equivalent based collapsing will be doing and also we are assuming the single circuit fault model. So, let us have this one. So, we see that uh, this is the case with this AND gate. So, you know that any one stacked fault you can keep. So, let us try to this is that we can keep any one of them. Similarly, for this case also we can keep any one of them and this is an OR gate. So, we have also seen that for OR gate you can keep either any one of them in this fault or this fault or this any one of them you can keep. So, let us see what they have done. So, we have seen we have taken as this stacked fault we have kept this stacked fault we have kept and this is if we have done on the in the level 1. So, we are going level wise. So, this is the first level we have done. So, in this case uh, this stuck at 0 fault, this stuck at 0 fault or these two are merged into this one. Uh, these things are all merged here and in this case this stuck at 0 fault and this stuck at 0 fault are merged over here. So, we are remaining with only two stuck at 0 faults as you can see over here. Now, we are going to level 2. So, you can see that in this OR gate this three stacked one faults are equivalent as we already discussed. So, any one of them you can keep. So, let us see what they have done. So, we have kept only one stacked fault. So, now initially if you look at it, so we had so many faults. So, how many we have saved in this case? So, uh, uh, out of this three, one, two, three, sorry, this is four, five, six and this is say seven, eight, nine. So, 9 faults were there which you can be merging or something. So, among these 9 faults we have kept only 3 of them. So, it is one third reduction has been possible. So, out of these 3 we have kept 1, out of these 3 we have kept 1, uh, 4, 5, 6 we have kept 1 and 7, 8, 9 we have kept 1. So, one third fault reduction is possible by equivalence. So, you can see over here. So, this is level 2, this level and finally, sorry, we have only a uh, one fault here, two fault here, three fault here and some other faults like a stack at 0 fault here and some stack at 1 faults here are still remaining for which we will see what we can do about with this. Okay, so, we have one third fault reduction. Now, let us take another example where we are going to consider fan outs. Okay, so, now again you see as I told you a very same thing will be like the previous example, but now there is a stack at 0 1 fault here is also stuck at 0 1 fault here and here also stuck at 0 1 fault here. And as is a fan out branch, so this one is independent, this one is independent and this one is independent. So, we have this one. So, this is our circuit example. Now, let us now investigate what is possible in this case. So, in this case if you see uh, uh, this is a AND gate. So, obviously among them we can keep any one of them. Then this is a OR gate. Okay, so, you can keep this one and this one and this one you can keep any one of them. Correct. So, this is what will be the possible. So, let us see what we can achieve. So, in this case you see uh, for this AND gate they have kept only one stack at 0 1 for stack at 0 fault over here and uh, these are for level 1 and if you do for a level 2 then again you can keep only a stack at 1 fault here for this gate and one stack at 0 fault. But you see in this case we have not been able to eliminate the faults over here because 
this uh, this net and this net is independent. So you can think, you can say that uh, this stack at zero fault and this stack at zero faults are almost equivalent kind of a thing. But then we can could have eliminated because this is the input to this AND gate, and in AND gate, a stack at zero fault, a stack at zero fault, a stack at zero fault, this thing can be merged. But you know that this line and this line are independent in for and out. If there is a stack at zero fault, this line will be affected. Like for example, if I tell you, so this is a very interesting thing to observe. If I merge this stack at fault and this stack at fault, there is an effect which gets changed. You say that if I say that if there is stack at zero fault here, then a stack at if a stack at zero fault is here, then this line is affected as well as this line is affected. But if there is only a stack at zero fault here, then only this line is affected. So the, there is two effect and we require to have two test pattern for this. So uh, this increase in sometimes is also required a increase in the number of test patterns because we are going down from 2 n to a much less number, but sometimes if we are going too less in number then may not be we are going to get the accuracy that was found out. So, if you are uh, keeping one more uh, test uh, fan out as an independent branch, so we require another test pattern for this line. So, which we can see in the let us say in So, to increase the number of test patterns, uh, we have kept the fan out lines as independent, which is giving a higher amount of accuracy. So, but uh, in the fault collapsing point of view, you can we just need to observe that we have collapsed this sorry, we have collapsed this stack at 0 fault here, here and here, but we could not do anything with this. So, this one is actually which we are having in the stack at fault model with fan outs, but still we have a lot of drop in the number of faults. Now, we will see another example, because in the last case we have seen that we could do a lot of things with what you call the stack at 0 fault. Now, you can see that we have a two stack at 1 faults over here, we have not done anything in this case. Similarly, in this in this case also we have in the last example, also we had some stack at 1 faults here and uh, these are the two stack at 1 for the AND gates and some stack at 1 for the OR gate or something. So, what we are going to see is that some faults still remain. So, can we do something with this? So, till now we have seen only uh, we have collapsed faults by equivalence. Let us see if we can do something else. So, now you see this is the same AND gate. So, let us say a stack at 1 fault is there. So, what uh, pattern you have to apply? Simply we have to apply a 0 over here and a 1 over here. So, you get the answer 1 if there is a fault because the stack at 1 fault and we are applying 0 1 and if there is no fault then what is going to happen? We are going to get a 0. Now, let us say we take the another net. So, in this case we that stack at 1 fault over here. Then what you are going to apply? We are going to apply a 1 over here and a 0 over here and the same answer 1 if there is a fault and 0 if there is no fault that is fine, but you can easily see that there are two different test patterns and obviously, the function if there is a stack at 1 fault over here, the function is I 2. If the stack at 1 fault over here, then what is the function? The function of this AND gate is I 2 because whatever I 2 it will be passed and if there is a stack at 1 fault here, then what is the function of this AND gate? It is I 1 because if it is stuck at 1, then whatever the value here will be passed. So, obviously, the two outputs are different and these faults are not equivalent. So, we cannot uh, do anything using uh, equivalent equivalence fault collapsing or equivalent fault theory if you are applying uh, what you call this uh, stack at 1 is concerned. But now, let us look at the stack at 1 fault at the output. So, now what you can apply? You can apply 0 0. So, if you are applying 0 0 1 if there is a fault because it will be stack at 1 and 0 if there is no fault. Similarly, you can apply a uh, 1 0 the answer is 1 if there is a fault and the answer is 0 there is no fault. Similarly, also you can apply a 0 1 that is accepting 1 1 you can apply any other pattern. Now, the now say what I do, I just give you an idea. So, let us think that what we can do. Say, for example, I give you say, I say that this even the stack at faults are stack at 1 faults are not equivalent, but still I assume that they are equivalent and I say that I just take a stack at 1 fault over here. Then what I can do? I can apply this pattern, this pattern, I can apply this pattern, I can apply this pattern, or I can apply this pattern. Now, by chance, say that I apply the pattern 0, 0. So, obviously, this fault, this pattern, this thing gets tested, but 0 0 is not a test for this one and not a test for this one. So, these two faults are not tested. So, you cannot merge or you can do not do anything with this, but now let, let me just change the idea a bit. Instead of collapsing this fault, I just keep this stack at one fault and this stack at one fault. Then what happens you see, then I what I am going to do is that I apply, I need to apply this pattern to test this one and I need to apply this pattern to test this one. So, what happens if I test this fault and then I test this fault, twice I am testing a stack at one fault here, just observe this. So, what happens? I am not considering stack at one fault here, I am just considering 
because I saw that I may land into problems if I consider stack at one fault here and if I totally do away with this one. So, what I have done now, I have just changed my uh, thought a bit and then what I have done, I have put a stack at one fault here and I put a stack at one fault here. Now, what I am doing to uh, test a stack at one fault here, you apply a 0 1 here. To test a stack at one fault here, you apply a 1 0 over here. And by if you look at this one, I am applying these two patterns, then twice I am also testing this one. So, automatically what happens, these two together dominates this one. Okay. Or, or you can say these two together can cover this one, but one you cannot do it. Because if I say that if I consider only a stack at one fault here, then what happens if I apply this one, then both of them are not tested. Then the worst case possibility you have to also always consider. Now, if I have only one stack at one fault here, then you are going to test this one fine, then you are also going to test this one fine, but then this one will not be tested. Because to test a stack at one fault here, you will apply a 0 1. And 0 1 is not a test for a stack at one fault over here. So, therefore, if we, but if we keep these two stack at faults at the inputs, then automatically the output stack at fault gets tested twice. So, that is why we can say that this is another type of fault collapsing which is called fault dominance. So, this way also you can reduce the number of faults from 3 to 2. In the case of fault equivalence what we have done? We have a 3 input and 2 input na and gate and then we quote from 3 stack at 0 faults we have made it to 1. So, also we have seen that if there is a 10 input and gate then uh, 11 stack at 0 faults can be converted to 1. But in case of stack at 1 faults in and gate it is not that much reduction, but it is somewhat at least you redu reduce the stack at fault at the output. That is if you take this uh, sorry if you take a stack at one fault at the input stack at one fault at the input automatically stack at one fault at the output is tested. So, at least one fault you are reducing. So, whatever you are reducing is good for us. So, some reduction is there. So, now, but is not as high as fault equivalence. Now, so let us look at the formal definition. The formal definition states that if all tests for a stack at one fault if all tests for a stack at f1 detects a fault f2, see, so all tests of stack at fault is f1. So, all tests of stack at one fault, so for fault f1. So, all tests for f1 is what? Only 0 1, because this stack at one fault has only one pattern, so that is 0 1. So, we are saying that all tests of pattern f1 detect fault f2. So, obviously, this detect f2 is correct, then f2 is dominating f1, so this is f2. So, all tests of f 1, this is the all test of f 1, only one pattern is there, is detecting f 2, then f 2 dominates f 1. So, in this case f 2 is dominating f 1, but you can easily see the definition other way does not hold. All tests, all patterns, if I consider this one as f 1 and this one as f 2, then see what happens, all tests of f 2. So, this is one test of f 2, this is one test of f 2, this is one test of f 2. All tests of f 1 should detect f 2. So, this one does not detect f 2. So, f 2 does not dominate f 1. But we can easily say that all tests of f1 that is single in number is detecting this one. So, f1 is detecting f2. So, f2 is dominating this one. So, f2 is actually dominating this one. Similarly, uh, all tests of this guy, this is only one pattern of this guy actually test this one. So, this, this one also you can consider as f1. So, it is saying that if all tests of fault f1 detect fault f2, then f2 dominates f1. So, f1 is this fault, f2 is dominating this one as well as this one. Now, if this is the case, then they say that if f2 dominates f1, then f2 can be removed and only f1 is retained. So, you just re eliminate f2 and you only retain f1. So, basically the philosophy here is very simple. It says that all patterns of this guy or this guy detects this one. So, you keep this one, this one and you delete this one. Because if you do the other way around, then you may be in a problem. It says that in this case this is f2 this one pattern may detect this one, another pattern may detect this, this one, sorry this one, but there is some other pattern lying in this space which are not detecting this two. So, if somehow you test this f 2 using this remaining part, then this f 1s will not be tested. So, therefore, f 2 dominates f 1 means whatever he available here can test this. So, better you eliminate this one, then automatically this guy will be tested more than once. So, that is the concept of fault collapsing by uh, fault dominance. So, in this case in case of AND gate what is going to happen? You are having only one stack at one fault, one stack at one fault here and automatically this can be retained, I mean this can be eliminated. So, let us see the generalized example. So, in case of uh, so AND gate this is the case, so one you can delete. So, in case of OR gate as I told you, you can easily verify that this is just the dual. So, in case of OR gate it is stack at 0. So, to test the stack at 0 fault over here, so you have to apply a 0 and a 1 over here to test this fault. To have press this fault, you have to apply a 
0 over here and a 1 over here and obviously if you are applying a 0 1 in this. So, the answer is uh, 0 if this is a fault and otherwise is normal. So, in this case also you are applying 0 and a 1. So, uh, if you are applying uh, sorry if you are applying something like uh, 0 over here and a 1 over here to test it then the answer is uh, 0 if the fault is there and 1 if it is normal. Okay. So, see, I can easily observe that 0 1 and 1 0 also test in this fault. So, uh, in case of uh, OR gate you can easily eliminate out this. So, uh, I mean NAND, I mean inverter this all faults were collapsed by this was the inverter. So, this only was stacked 0 stacked 1 fault which was easily uh, eliminated or uh, collapsed by fault equivalence, but uh, in case of fault dominance you need not consider the inverter. Again these things are remaining same for the AND and the NOR gate this is very obvious and you can easily understand. So, now let us take another example where we are going to see the fault dominance based collapsing. In the last example, we have got uh, this circuit where we are on, or, or we have using where we are used only fault equivalence to do the collapsing. So, in this case if you remember we had a stuck at 0 fault here, we had a stuck at 0 fault here, stuck at 0 fault here, stuck at 0 fault here and also we had a stuck at 1 fault here and a stuck at 1 fault here. So, uh, this guy and this guy were uh, collapsed and we got this one. Similarly, uh, this guy and this guy was collapsed and we got this one. So, this guy and this guy got collapsed and we got this one. This was by equivalence. Now, we will see what else because some faults were still remaining. Let us see what we can do by using the dominance. So, uh, in the first level, and you can already in the first level you can see the all this target one is already collapsed by equivalence with the AND gate, but this two can easily collapse this one because if you are testing these two automatically these two get tested. So, this target one fault is eliminated and uh, you can just also you have to just remember the point that this is target one fault over here. So, this is get eliminated by this one as well as this is also getting eliminated by a target one fault by equivalent. So, a single fault can be getting eliminated or collapsed by both. So, this one get uh, this this target one fault gets I mean collapsed by equivalence with OR gate as well as by dominance with this one. So, similarly we, we have this one is the final thing we have at level 1. Now, if you go to this level you have to just know that. So, uh, we, we have a stack at 0 fault here and a stack at 0 fault here. This you have to understand. So, now who is having this stack controlling this stack at 0 fault? These two stack at 0 faults are actually being tested by this one. This is not shown here because they have already collapsed, but still they are. We have to know that if there is a stack at 0 fault here and a stack at 0 fault here, these two stack at 0 faults are automatically getting tested. So, if these two stack at 0 faults are getting tested by fault dominance of an OR gate, this one is also getting tested. So, this you can collapse by virtue of this two and these two are getting collapsed by virtue of this one. So, finally, we are having a circuit like this. So, this me just repeat the last part was bit tricky. So, there is a stack at one fault here which you can easily collapse by this one, but now also we had a stack at one fault over here sorry a stack at 0 fault over here which we are not finding out how to collapse because we are not seeing stack at 0 fault here, but you have to understand that these two stack at 0 faults are here then they are actually being tested by virtue of this two. So, this three gets collapsed by fault equivalent fault dominance and this one gets eliminated and only these two remains and again these two gets eliminated by fault equivalence of this one and this one. So, this is our final circuit we are having. So, the number of faults here are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, we have 6 faults here which needs to be tested. So, we have 2 oh sorry we have 6 patterns required to be tested and the number of nets here are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So, 7 into 2 14 faults were there. So, we, we should have required 14 test patterns, but now uh, if we, with this collapsing we have only 6 in number. So, we have reduced the number of test patterns from 2 to the power 4 because 1 to 4 patterns are there from 16 to 6. So, this is a great achievement which we have done using stack at fault model and uh, what you call the fault collapsing equivalence and dominance. Now, let us again see the same example with uh, both stack at uh, fault with equivalence and dominance and we are looking at the fan out example. So, this one is all example with fan out. So, this is the circuit we have already got what you can say this is this is the circuit we have got after fault collapsing equi using only equivalence. Now, so let us see what we can do. Now, if you see the level 1, so these are the two um, this uh, stack at 1 faults are there. Now, let us see uh, what we can have. So, this uh, this is a stack at 1 fault already there. So, because the OR gate is collapsing. So, OR gate is uh, this also stack at 1 fault over here. So, this one, this one and this one this collapse all these stack at one faults 
and now these are all collapsed equivalent. So, let us see what we can do in level 1. So, we do not have any changes at this level, but let us look at this last level we can see that there is a change. So, sorry. So, this one we have had level 1. So, this is stuck at fault with equivalence collapsing, but as you can see in level 1 that is we are considering this as level 1, there we cannot have any fault collapsing using dominance because already we have both the stuck at ones which is collapsing this stuck at 1 that is by dominance. So, only what is left is in this level we may try something because we know that in case of an OR gate, these 3 stuck at 0 faults get collapsed by these 2 stuck at 0 faults, but this stuck at 0 fault is not visualized here because this guy is continuing over here. So, that is what is achieved here. This is a stuck at 0 over here. So, this guy is controlling this and this 3 stuck at 0 faults are can be uh, this keeping these 2, this can be eliminated by fault dominance and so we are having a circuit like this. So, we are having uh, uh, this, uh, this stuck at 0, stuck at 0, this stuck at 0, this stuck at 0 and this stuck at 0, this are taken care of by this one by equivalence and you can say that this stuck at 1 is equivalent dominated by this one and this is also eliminated and there should have been a stuck at 0 fault here. So, which is actually again uh, this are stuck at 0 implies a stuck at 0 over here and these 3 guys by fault dominance actually eats up this 2 and we have blindly laid up with this one. So, you can also see that also we have reduced the faults to a quite a large number, but now we have already seen that, but this guys, this guys and this guys we cannot do any kind of elimination because we have seen that these things are not equivalent in case of a uh, what do you call fault dominance or fault equivalence fan out lines are not not equivalent or they are not dominated. So, all these faults in individual fan out lines we have to keep. Okay. So, now uh, towards the end or you can say that you have to uh, understand a very interesting fact over here. So, what is the interesting fact you can see here last example if you see. So, where are the stuck at faults? This, this is a circuit without any fan out, this is a circuit without any fan out. So, what happens all these faults are actually getting clustered over the inputs, no internal lines is having any kind of stuck at faults because all have been collapsed and brought to the input level and this circuit does not have any kind of a fault what do you call sorry any kind of a fan out there is no fan out. So, it is it is very obvious why it happens because for any gate like AND gate OR gate NOT gate or whatever. So, the fault by fault equivalence the fault at the outputs can be brought over here by equivalence only one fault remains and by fault dominance what happens the output falls stuck at 0 second one can be brought by a equivalent number of faults at the uh, sorry by uh, by n number of faults at the inputs like this stuck at one fault here are brought together by the two stuck at fault one faults here. So, the other dual thing happens for an OR gate yeah. and uh, uh, and for uh, this thing you can see that there is a stuck at 0 fault over here though so, and there is stuck at 0 fault ever. So, both of them get converted in this one. So, you can very easily see what happens all the inputs are only having a stuck at 0 faults and the internal lines do not have any other stuff uh, any other fault that needs to be considered because by fault dominance and fault equivalence uh, all the faults get transferred to the inputs of a gate and if there is a uh, no fan out then this thing holds transitively and all out all only the out inputs of a circuit have faults. So, this gives a very very less number if, if a circuit internally has n nets. So, you can know that the um, number of inputs will be much much less than the number of internal lines. So, then let be i. So, in the worst case only 2 i number of stuck at fault needs to be considered. Th th the 2i also is the upper bound because uh, if it is an AND gate then we will have only stuck at 1 and only 1 stuck at 0 and if it is the OR gate then you will have the dual then you have only this 2 stuck at 0 and 1 stuck at 1 in case it is an OR gate and vice versa. So, is the only the upper bound is this 2i where i is the number of input lines and there will be also much somewhat less depending on the OR gate or the input. So, we have come down from 2 to the power n to 2 n and fro from 2 n to upper bound of 2 i where i is the number of inputs. So, this is the beauty of stuck at fault model, but if there is a if there is fan out then the number the number slightly rises because uh, now why it rises you can already see. Now, we have stuck at faults at the inputs of the gates that is fine and also at the fan out branches because these guys and these guys cannot be brought over here because they are not equivalent. So, in addition to 2 i that is the number of inputs again some 2 f or you can say 2 f number you have to add for the number of faults because they are the number of 
fan out branches. Each fan out branches, we have a stack at 0 fold and a stack at 1 fold. Sometimes they will be merged with what you can call, say for example, in this case, this is the fan out. And these are fan out. So this fan out is also the input of the gates, and this fan out is also the input of the gates. So uh, and and this is also some extra fault you have to have. So depending on the some fan out, say this is the F. So uh, we will we'll have some faults here. We'll have some fault here. But these faults and these faults cannot be collapsed. So and again two faults will remain. So if there are F fan out branches, so along with two I, also two F number of faults get added. Then again this is the upper bound. So uh, if you have fan out, then the number of faults or the number of test patterns. In, the, in such a case, is slightly higher than 2 into number of inputs. That is the number of 2 into number of fan out nodes. I mean, this starts a fan out, so this will have some extra faults. But if if we had forgotten the concept of fan out, then these three faults could have been merged to this one. So this is actually called a checkpoint theorem, which says that uh, if there is no fan outs, then the number of test patterns or the number of faults is 2 into the number of primary inputs upper bound, and if there is a uh, fan out then you have to uh, put checkpoints in the primary inputs as well as the fan out cases. So, uh, the beauty of stacked fault is that it detects, uh, it says that it, uh, if you have test pad, I mean the beauty of stacked fault model says that and using checkpoint is saying that if you have a fan out then you put uh, checkpoints at the in primary inputs as well as the fan out stems or the fan out branches appropriate positions and just find out what patterns to test it. Then the number of uh, faults are much much less than 2 n say um, some 2 i plus 2 p kind of 2 f kind of a stuff where f is the number of fan out kind of a thing. Then a very very less number of patterns as well as a very very less number of faults are required to be handled which is much much less than again 2 n and but still the Statistically, it has been shown that the confidence or the accuracy is as high as 99.9 percent .9 plus. So, in a nutshell, so what we have seen, the beauty of st uh, structural testing using fault models is that we need not have any extra pins, we need not have any extra registers, we need not have any extra multiplexers, as well as we have, we can just apply some test patterns and verify that. Uh, there is no stack at fault model in any of the nets and even the number of nets is say n, we do not require to apply even 2 n patterns. The number of patterns are even much less than 2 n because by fault collapsing, by fault equivalence and fault dominance the number comes to as the upper bound of 2 i plus 2 f if there is fan outs and so we, the test time becomes very, very less because and uh, because uh, what you can call that uh, the idea is 2, uh, 2 n if n is the number of uh, nets in the circuit are there. Now, you require 2 n patterns, but by collapsing with num the number comes to 2 i plus 2 f, where i and f are much much less than n. So, our test time is much much less because the patterns are less. So, we have solved a very big nightmare problem of test pattern or test time reduction. So, we have reduced the number of test patterns, yes having a accuracy of 99.9 .9 percent plus and our test time remains very low here because the number of patterns are less. So, we have achieved our target using structural testing with fault models. I, and in the next sequence of lectures, we will see given a test, given a fault, a staggered fault, how can you automatically find out a test pattern? Because in our case, the circuits were very simple having a AND gate OR gate on 2 or 3 uh, level of circuits were there, but it is a very complex circuit. Then you have to find out that also requires an algorithm to find out that given a test or given a fault say f internally a circuit, how do you find out a test pattern that test the fault. So, that we will see in subsequent lectures. Now, if you look at the question and answer session, so today we will ask you simple stuff so that we can see in the examples later. So, uh, for what class of circuits maximum benefit is achieved due to fault collapsing and when benefits are and when benefits are less. What is the typical number of test pattern required to test this circuit? So, very simply you can say that if the number of if the circuit has very less fan outs or if the circuit do not have any fan outs then the number of faults are only equivalent only equal to order of to the number of primary inputs. So, here you get a great benefit, but if the number of fan outs are very, very large, then slowly the benefit goes away because faults cannot be collapsed in the fan outs. So, in a typical circuit, the number of fan outs are never very high. So, we always get a good amount of benefit uh, when you are what do you call you are taking a fault collapsing by fault equivalence and dominance. But if you have a high number of fan outs, then slightly the benefit is less. The second question is what is the fa what faults can be collapsed by equivalence? in case of an XOR gate. So, we have seen in our study uh, AND gate, OR gate, inverter, NAND gate, but we have not seen XOR gate. So, what is the case? By can we do anything by fault equivalence? The answer is no, because for fault equivalence, the co answer is to be that with a fault here and with a fault here, the output function for this one and this one should be equivalent, but this is not the case of in case of XOR gate. So, we cannot have any fault collapsing in this by equivalence. You see, if I have a stack at 0 fault here, so what is the answer? The answer is I 1 
this is uh, this is sorry if i1 so uh, to have, have a stack at zero fault here what you have to do it you have to apply 1 1 so what is the function if there is a stack at zero fault here then what is the answer i1 if there is a fault so if there is a fault over here so the zero is actually propagating i1 is bit propagating and if there is no fault the answer is i1 x or i2 if there is no fault now if there is a stack at zero fault over here so what happens we know that uh, uh, an XOR gate is a controlled inverter. So, if uh, one line is 0, then XOR gate actually passes whatever is in the output. And if it is a 1, then X1 passes the inversion. Okay, so, in this case, if it is stuck at 0 fault over here, over here, so obviously stuck at 0 fault over here. So, whatever happens is actually uh, this I1 gets passed through. Actually, we should write it say I2. I mean, that's uh, just it was, uh, of some reason I'm going to mistake from my side. It was I2 because it's a control inversion. So, if you stack at 0 means whatever is available here will pass. I2 if there is a fault. Now, in this case, if you see if the stack at 0 fault over here, then what happens? It is I1 if there is a fault. And, and because I1 gets passed because the control inversion. Stack at 0, so it will be passed. If there is no first, is I1 x or I2. So, this I2 and I1 are not equivalent. So, that is a problem. Now, if you have a stack at 0 fault over here, so what is the answer? Is I1 x or I2 if no fault and it is a 0 if there is a fault. So, you can see that neither of them are equivalent. Now, in this case you see if you stack at 1 fault over here, then what is the answer? Is the control inverter. So, 1 means the inversion. So, I2 will be inverted and it will be going over here. And if there is no fault, it is simple XOR. Now, in this case if you see the stack at 1 fault over here, then I1 will be inverted and it will be here. And is I1 x or I2 if there is no fault. And if the stack at one fault here, one and if x1, x, x1, x2, there is no fault. So, neither of them are equivalent. So, we cannot have any kind of fault collapsing for an XOR gate. So, if your circuit has too many XOR gates, then we say that it is a uh, not a good design from a testability point of view. So, thank you, and we come to the end of this lecture. So, from in next lectures onwards, we will see how to generate test patterns automatically given the faults. Thank you.